What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Justin Rodriguez, your favorite lender here in Neighborhood Loans, and we are back with another episode of Cafecito Talks, and we have a great episode, but of course, before we start, you already know I got my cafecito on deck to start this episode, guys, and we have very two special guests today, and the reason why I say so is because these people are very young, hungry individuals, and uh, just being in the position that they have become and overcome all obstacles that they have thus far and how quickly they've done it, I tell you guys right now, I very much so look up to you guys, and just to be in the, your guys' position, it's amazing, um, so I'm going to introduce Jose Arroyo, JC, you guys want to kind of introduce yourselves on your story, um, and and just overall where you guys are at today. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it started. Um, my name is Jose Arroyo. I'm with CloudGate Realty. Um, I've been in real estate for about, well, about entering in year five now. Uh, I have my own team. I uh, started basically from the bottom in a way. <laughs> and then now we are where we are. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say there. That's dope, man. Go ahead. Well, I'm JC, the designated manager broker of CloudGate. I just turned four years in the business. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it. So put it put in perspective, right? These guys, these two individuals, right? They have grown their business in, in about four years. So you guys can kind of understand where they've come from because they went from a one, I think two different companies prior to, and then now they actually opened up their own brokerage. So when they speak about CloudGate, that's actually their own brokerage, which they built their own real estate teams. They have a, a very large number of production and, and, and families that they've closed on every single year, and they converted all this into their own brokerage. So um, give us a little bit of insight on your guys' journey. How did you guys build everything? Because it's it's crazy to think that a lot of people say it takes you five years to build the business and it took you guys not only five years to build a business but to open up your own brokerage and that's kind of unheard of in our business so what was your guys journey look like throughout the process oh no, that's a great question um honestly we 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 knew from the beginning that opening our own office was the end goal um we're happy that we made it happen we didn't realize ourselves that it was going to help it this fast right. um but it goes to show that with hard work dedication and making sure that you're putting the right things in place and the right people, especially make, make surrounding yourself with the right people that you're going to be able to get things done. Um, one of the ways that we knew from the beginning would start as, you know, making sure that we made it as top producer solo agents. And we knew as we started, like, you know, talking to top producers, talking to people in the business that, man, what are the top guys doing to get as much business as possible? So we saw them right away, like, hey, would they have their own teams? Um, they have their own systems. And we're like, okay, we got to we gotta figure that out and, and do it our way. So we knew right away, like, hey, once we get that to that uh, plate that we're top agents, we got to make sure that we're also building our teams. So that way we're kind of like, in a way, having a system that's making us money while basically, you know, we're still uh, focusing on other tasks and production, right? So once we built that team, it, then it was a, now we got to make it the team top producer, right? Like now we got to get our team going and make sure that they're top producers as well. Once we reached that point that we both reached there, then we were like, all right, it's time for the next step. So again, yes, we reached it quickly, but it was always one of our goals from the very beginning to having our own office. And we kind of made ourselves step by step on how to get there. And, and that's how we kind of built up to it. Right. And I feel like the one of the hardest parts about not only, I guess, building your own real estate business. And for me, this was me personally was trusting somebody, right? Having the trust and building your own business and, and pushing your business and combining your business together. So I guess I want to dive deeper into your guys' relationship because it's kind of weird how like, you know, I me Percy, right? If I were to have one of my boys, you know, like starting a business with them, I would kind of have a weird feeling on like, what if it doesn't work and then we don't become what we want to be and then it, it kind of divides everything so how was your how did you guys know to solidify your business and build the business together how'd you guys know that that felt right so jose i've actually known him for since i was 14 we went to we went to high school together we met freshman year of high school um as he became a realtor like immediately after i became a realtor and not because he told me like hey i'm a realtor now it would it just happened and then so we started talking like, hey, dude, we're both filters. Let's start working. And then him and I, we've always kind of competed with each other all the time. But so we were able to get together. And when we started, our office was really far. It was, it was probably about an hour away. So we just meet at a Starbucks every day from like 10 to 8 p.m. We were just there. 
at the Starbucks. People even thought we worked there because <laughs> <'cause> we <laughs> were just there, there day, all right. the time working and making phone calls and walking around the Starbucks like if we owned the place pretty much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meeting clients there. <clears throat> So we were always competing, like, hey, dude, like, I, I got two new leads today. Like, oh, well, I got four. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he was like, I bet. And then we would also share with each other a lot of ideas. I was like, hey, I'm doing this, and I'm doing this marketing. And then he does it, he tries it, and it works better for him. I'm like, well, what the heck am I doing wrong? <laughs> and then he would show me the tweaks that he would do. And it was just going back and forth, like, you know, sharing ideas with each other. And then shortly we realized that we were competitors, but we were also boosting each other up to the point where, like, we've always been head to head trying to try to be better than the other, but also helping each other to escalate. And we would talk about it. We would say, hey, you know, the ultimate goal is to have an office. And it wasn't it wasn't because of anything other than like that we want to help other agents. It was just because we wanted to have an office. But then later on, as we started figuring out the frustrations of like we would see, because we would see that other agents would get really frustrated because they'll come in into a 1099 job and then they don't know that they have to do everything. They don't know that there's nothing, nobody that's really going to help them as they start. Does that make sense? They, and they don't, they don't even know where to start. The problem is that they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. I mean, the main struggle that I saw with other brokerages um, that I wanted to make sure that we kind of nipped in the butt as soon as we opened the office was that, we wanted to make sure that as an agent comes in and joins, that we're not, they're not just, okay, you're you're out on your own, figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that we want to make sure that me and JC sat down and like, okay, let's make sure as soon as this agent signs up, that, hey, we're going to connect you with a lender. Hey, we're going to connect you with our team to make sure that you understand the process, you understand how to, a contract works, you understand how the lending requirements are. And then on top of that, we're going to be on top of you till you learn what lead generation actually is, how to how to actually get business as soon as possible being a new agent, right? right. How to uh, use social media, how to use your lenders to do things like this, doing a podcast and, and spreading your branding and your word out there in regards to you being in real estate. And also the biggest thing that we focus on too with those new agents is make sure that you tell everybody. A lot of people are very secretive about being an agent. They don't know how to be, you know, tell their family, their friends, et cetera. They have to spread the word as much as possible so that way it comes back to them. Um, you want to add more into that? Yeah, so, I mean, it, like he said, agents come in and then they see those TV shows and they feel like they're going to come in so and the sunset. millions of dollars are going to come flooding <laughs> in right trucks. behind them. Yep. <laughs> And then they, they get this shock where, like, all their family, they told them, yeah, you know, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy, I'm going to wait for you to get the license. Well, it was all bullshit. They were just telling them that. So that at the end of the day, they, they're just like, you know what, we're not ready. We wanted them, we want to train them to exploit, to use their circle of influence at first. Because Jose and I, we have a, a, a book of business of past clients that we get to, we get to call, you know, see how they're doing, but they don't, right? So, and even agents that are now, that they have plenty of closings, they don't really know how to use that, how to leverage that to their advantage to generate more business. So that's why we've established all these systems on, on the trainings. As soon as they begin, we have this 90-day program where, you know, week one, they do this, week two, they do this other. And do you meet, like, every single one to make sure that they, yeah. they're bought? Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the golden part, right? And it it's a proven system that works because you guys did it, right? You guys are, the hardest part about establishing a business is the accountability part, right? If you don't have someone that's actually telling you that you're doing something wrong, it's kind of hard for you to kind of figure whether, whether or not you're doing something. Yeah. And you know what? Unknowingly, me and him working together from the beginning, that's what we were doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we were just like, I was like, man, I, we got to meet at Starbucks. We got to get together. Hey, are you, are you coming to the office? Well, like Starbucks? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, <laughs> so that, and, and being on top of each other. First, it was like, how many leads you got? Then it went to how many under contracts you have? How many closings you have this week? You know, and then it, it lit a fire on each of our assets. So, hey, we can't, I can't let Koki win. I can't let JC win. It was just a competition between us, you know? Damn, I just caught myself. He just caught himself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think that that's super important to have that that person and and 
like you said, mentorship is yeah. like, bro, if you don't got a mentor in this business, I think it's mm -hmm. very, not that you can do it, but if you don't have someone that, that at least allows you to, to drive yourself to become better, then it's really hard for you to accomplish yeah. what you guys done in such a short period of time. So um, I think it's super important what you guys are doing to have that one-on-one -on -one mentorship and allowing these newer agents to have that person that they didn't have before. Because a lot of times, like you said, they kind of get thrown as a number and then they get into a business where, you know, maybe in some cases they might have other resources that other brokerages might not have but i think it's lacking mentorship is very very large in our industry and i think you guys are doing a very good job of uh, applying that for the agents that you guys work with i want to elaborate on that so the mentorship we also try to implement within the office so our office is pretty much like a, an open bullpen for everybody can talk to each other and listen to each other so as somebody comes in um, we always tell like the leaders of our of our office because luckily we've been able to grow our office pretty quick but we already have i mean 30 something agents and that's huge like that you gotta shine on that because like a lot of brokers when they open i don't even think to get 10 agents is pretty cool to get 37 agents, you guys gotta be doing something right you know right so that's what i was gonna say so how luckily we have some top producers they already work within our office that they're all super nice where we tell them like hey rafa hey eddie can you help this person you know, like with this or with that. And then they share their knowledge. So I feel like everybody in the office so far is open to sharing what they know, like what's worked for them and what's not working for them. Mm -hmm. So if, when you guys first kind of got into the industry and um, obviously, like you said, you guys are getting a lot of people gravitating towards you. And I think from what I see, it does look like you're getting a lot of the, the future business, people who are the future of this business. Right. And I think that's huge because as we grow, right. And as we get older, we're obviously going to be the next people that take over the business as people start getting out of the business. So what do you guys for newer agents, what strategies do you think they need to put into their business in order for them to be successful? That's a great question. Um, as a new agent, put put that camera on me right now. <laughs> let me let me say this. I, one of my pet peeves: as you, soon as you sign up and you become a new agent in the in the real estate field, you have to work for yourself, right? You have to learn for yourself. You have to put yourself out there. Nobody's gonna tell you what to do, right? Mm -hmm. So you gotta be ready to figure things out on your own, as well as taking into account like that mentorship that you're getting and implementing it. Because me and JC could tell you whatever we want, you know, to do, but it's not going to work until you actually put yourself out there and actually do it, right? Mm -hmm. If you're, if it's going in one ear and it's coming out the other, <laughs> nothing's going to happen. Right. You know, you got to put the work into it. One thing is learning. The other thing is actually applying it. And I see a lot of agents always eager to learn, but I never see them eager or making the steps to actually apply what they're learning. Right. And that's, that's one of those things that really it's one of those. It's how bad piece. do you want it? Is how bad do you want it? You know, it's like, man, you your back's against the wall. You got to close the deal. Get out there and do you. Make sure you're putting your business out there. Me and JC can't do that for you because me and JC are me and JC, you know? <laughs> right, right. And then we we I give them the steps and it's a matter of just putting yourself out there and applying them. Right. That's the biggest thing. It's just making sure that you're 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 putting your yourself in that position to to just do the stuff that you're you you're set up to do. Right. And what I love about that is that honestly, uh I have a quote from Gary V. Uh -huh. I better cut you off, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Gary V. Why you he, bring up other brokers? I know, dude. Here, that what you be? No, <laughs> Gary V. Is a you never heard Gary V. Oh, Gary V. Gary this V. I'm thinking, dude, thinking about. No, thinking about. Guy, what's the other one? Gary Keller? I think I was thinking about Gary Keller. Oh, <laughs> man, uh, no, I, once I heard, <laughs> once I heard <laughs> Gary, I was like, trigger. Hey, he was like, <laughs> no. I'm leaving. No, I'm crazy. <laughs> um, no, but Gary V. He was talking about uh, working out. Right. Everybody knows how to get skinny. Everybody knows what you got to do in order for you to lose weight. Everyone knows how to do. You can get I can create a workout plan for you and this would be the best workout plan in the world. Studies, everything backing it up. But if you don't do the workout, what's the good of the workout plan? You know, if you have the regimen, the plan in order for you to be successful, but you don't apply it what, at the end of the day, there's no point of it. It's useless. So I think it applies to everything in life. Right. Gary V is the one who said that. Yeah. That's hilarious because I told my agents that I just I know I heard it from somewhere. <laughs> I don't know from where. And what I told my agents is, hey, you guys could sign up to a gym membership, but you're not going to get abs. Right. You still got to put in the work. <laughs> right. right. Just because you get the gym membership don't mean you're going to put in the work. So. So, yeah, that's funny. I guess that's where I heard it. from. There you go, dude. There you go. But no, yeah, I think, you know, one of the major things, too, that I do appreciate about you guys is is the fact of social media. Right. I think you know, I and I'm the one person that is a huge advocate for social media because I, I feel like as I grew my business, right, the more that I started to grow in my business, I knew social media was the number one reason why I did so. And it, it grew from not having any business to 
just having a name in the business, right? Because when you have a lot of people who have been in the industry 20, 30 years, 10, 15, 20 years, whatever, they have already established names because they've been around for so long. They might have had billboards. They might have, but whatever the, whatever they had, everyone knows their name because they've been established in the business. They have the experience. But the fastest way of doing so is getting through online, right? Because not a lot of people have the ability to buy a billboard off rip, you know? And I think that that's what's super important for newer agents to take advantage of that. And I think everybody can do it, but who's going to be more disciplined enough to do it, right? Who's going to take the time and put the the time and effort to do things like this? Because I think I take this as a money-making activity. This is going to make me money, right? And I think people are going to not understand it until they start seeing everybody around them grow. And, you know, we all have our abilities of doing things, whatever it's cold calling, whatever it might be. But I think social media for me is my money-making activity. Uh, So I want to, you guys... Consistently uh, for about three years, two or three years. So that's probably one of the reasons why agents don't don't take action, because we're accustomed to immediate gratification, right? For you, you've been so consistent for it that now you're getting some somewhat of the, you know, of the fruits from it. But it, people are so accustomed to immediate gratification that they just try it once and then they stop. Like, oh, it didn't work out. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna stop doing this, and. We consistently try to tell them that, like, hey, you got to be consistent. <laughs> We're consistently telling them to be consistent, right? Yeah. So in order to, for us to, to motivate them to be consistent, we just keep taps on them. We just keep telling them, like, hey, like, why aren't you doing this? Because my rule is you have to meet 10 new people a day. Ten, you have to make 10 new connections a day, and then you have to write it down. You have to write down, okay, I met this guy. So I already met three new people today. So I'm gonna write down their names, <laughs> and then that, that's it. You know, like Do you I meet have them that and get inform like their number or something. Like, or you just meet them and that's it. <clears throat> no, so I, I don't really get their numbers all the time, but at least I'm happy with myself because I know. Does that make sense? <clears throat> the the con- because we're our sales, we're selling ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. So by me meeting three new people, they're they're gonna know who I am, you know, because I'm gonna introduce myself. I'm gonna tell them what I do. First thing I do, like, hi, I'm JC. I'm a realtor. <laughs> so they're gonna know who I am, and then they're gonna be like, "I met this dude this one time, and he, you know, he was a realtor." Let me see if I can find him on Facebook. They they look me up on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and they're like, "Oh yeah, this is the guy." And then they send me a message to there because I already made that connection, right? So I tell everybody, meet ten new people a day, and then write it down. So for everybody, we we have our our client structure. So just people we know, we have it we have it written down, right? Then we have our clients, our leads. Then we have our pre-approvals, our sellers. Then we have people on the contract. So we have, we have everything pretty like structured pretty well where it works for us. Jose has a pretty similar system as me. So I tell him, I tell everybody, this is what you got to do. And then when we meet the next week, I tell him, okay, show me your list. Well, you know, I've been working on it, but I I've met ten new people, but you know, I just haven't written it down. Okay, so you're not doing what you're supposed to do, right? right. So, <laughs> No, that makes so, sense. But that also kind of makes them feel very uncomfortable where next time we meet, they're like, they actually show me the list. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, okay. And that's the accountability <clears throat> part where they're like, oh, shit, I don't want JC to yell at like, me. Like, well, even if you're not yelling shit. at them, yeah. it's just, yeah, being able to. No, I, I don't yell at them, but I do talk a lot of shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, you want to be successful and you're not doing what you're supposed there's, to do. There's no results without execution. If you don't do something, you're not going to see any results. And that's the thing. That's We provide you the structure. If, now it's on to you, the agent, to execute it so they can see that. That come back in the form of sales, closings, et cetera. That's how you keep building on uh, a successful team or producing uh, agent. Right. And you know how I know that works? That that just that strategy alone works, you know, because I I had a guy, it was random, it was super weird. That, that just two days ago, I got into a car accident, crazy shit, bro. My, my whole wheel, or my tire fell off the axle, whatever. Crazy girl hit me. It's crazy. So this guy, random, random, just texted me on Facebook. And he's like, hey, bro, uh, I never met you before, but, you know, I was driving out Fullerton and I saw the car that hit you on the other side of the street and your car was messed up. And I saw the plate cafecito, so I knew it was you. <laughs> but I just wanted to say, hope all is well. Hope you're having good. And I never met this guy. Random. Dude just hits me up on Facebook. And I was like, oh, thank you, bro. Appreciate it. You know, whatever. But it's just cool to be able to, you know. Me, if you just meet one new person a day, because whatever, whether it's be through social media, whether you're at the grocery store doing compra and you just go up to a random person, you just talk to them, meet them, Home Depot, wherever it's it, wherever you might be, if you take the time to do that, it's crazy the abilities that you can and the relationships that you can build just from doing that. And that's why I think having that presence on social media is huge because I tell people this analogy all the time. 
how long would it take you to do a thousand cold calls a day? Mm-hmm. Right? That analogy, it, it's super important for me because I, it would take me, I, honestly, I think it would take me almost a month because I don't like cold call. I hate it. It would take me forever. I have ADHD. As soon as I pick up the phone, I start calling two people, I start having a random conversation and it goes from, should be a 10 minute conversation to an hour and then I'm just everywhere, like squirrel, everywhere is going over. But that's why social media helps me. So I post two, three times a day, I get a thousand views on each, just 2,000 people I touch without me having to actually do anything, right? I lo- social media is just doing the stuff for me in the background while I'm just doing it. So it's like, I try to be consistent, try and post every single day. And, and that was the way that I built my business. Yeah. But what I tell people, it's not got to be social media. If you're good at cold calling and you want to cold call 100 people a day and that's how it works and you're efficient at it, then do that. But you have to do it every single day and create a routine that you're gonna actually going to follow. Because if you're not going to follow, there's no point, you know. But for you guys on the come up, Right. I want to know your trials and tribulations, because I think it's important for people to see that. Yeah. Four years is a success. And now you got your own brokers. You got this, whatever. It was easy. But I want to know and like dive deeper into how you guys built to what you built, because it's not easy what you guys did. Don't crack. There was definitely a lot of trials and tribulations throughout the whole process. Um, You know, and, and I'll start from kind of like where we came from to where we're at now. We were just talking about how funny life is. Right. Like. He would have ended up being a trucker had things gone the right way, right? I would have probably ended up being a banker or even probably a lender. <laughs> um, and now we're here, you know, as as realtors, broker owners. Um, it's just funny how life life throws different swings at you and you just got to roll with them. Um, one of the hardest things getting from where we were to where we're at now was just kind of creating our own sphere um, and making sure that people work with us. We went to the same high school. We graduated the same year. We have the same circle of friends and yet we are still able to leverage them to help us keep growing, right? He's my direct compar- competitor in a way, right? Mm-hmm. But we're I'm still growing with him. Why is that? Because we still made sure that whoever vibe with us, we just kept pushing on that and pushing on that. And I think that's one of the things at first that made it hard for each of us to kind of see we were going to grow because we were like, man, we're helping each other. But at the same time, we know the same circle. So (laughs) how is that going to really help us or not? And now it's to a point where we know who's going to go with who because people are going to, you know, someone's going to, whoever works with you, they're going to work with you because they know, like, and trust you, right? So as we developed our business, that got out the way. And then one thing that I would say as, as we developed that, then we had to figure out how to build our teams. We didn't know that and, and how to how to structure uh, our agents and our assistants and transaction coordinators. Who do we hire first? Uh, you know, who do we not hire? Right. How do we even hire somebody? <laughs> you know, how do we pay them? There are so many questions that we had as we kept building our, our business that we needed that mentorship with. And that was one of the reasons why, you know, we made certain moves to make sure that we got that help to help us elevate and learn. And we were like, okay, we got to we gotta make note of this because whoever joins us, whoever works with us, we got to have this ready for them so they don't make the same mistakes we made, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest part about mentorship that comes in. It's like, hey, we suffered for you right? <laughs> so that when you come in here, we literally have steps for you to follow so you don't make the same mistakes we made. And uh, to piggyback off, piggyback off something else that you said, like, not every, me and JC, we're, we're top producers, right? But our businesses are completely different. Some things work for JC that they don't work for me and vice versa. So one thing that I always coach my agents is that you have to, one, follow the steps. Two, figure out as you do this, what works for you, right? You said it, cold calls don't work for you, right? Social media does, but that might be something reverse for some, another person. So different people are different niches of their personality. And it's always very important early on, the earlier you find out what works for you, the better your real estate career is going to go, whether you're a lender, realtor, insurance agent, et cetera. Right. And how did you guys kind of overall get over that hump, though? Because, like, honestly, that would be a tough thing for me to, like, build a partnership. And you're like, fuck, dude, which lead is going where? How does it? we ever really thought about it. Like, No. I think it was just kind of like. We knew it, but we're just like, whatever. (laughs) <laughs> because so like there were a couple of times that I had this client that I was working with forever like um I, I don't want to say her name but <laughs> but I was working with her like she reached out as soon as she found out that I was a, a realtor and I kept messaging her you know sending her emails calling her every now and then like hey how are you you ready or what and then all of a sudden 
he posts a picture that they they're close <laughs> at the and then, table. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh shit! I mean, I wasn't mad about it, but I, I told Koki, I was like, oh dude, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that was my client. And then like, we just laughed about it, right? Yeah. So then I asked her what happened. She's like, well, I always see you guys posting pictures together. You guys work for the same company. I figure it was the same thing. I was like, no, it's not man. You know, like yeah, like I, I was. And then that's the thing. I was always happy for his success as he was to mine. So I think that's why there was no hump. Just because like we were always kind of like looking out for each other's success, making sure both of us are good. And, and in a way, it's like if it goes with JC rather than me or vice versa, yeah. we're happy with it. As long as it goes to either one of us, right. then we're good with it. As long as it doesn't go to somebody else, no, then, exactly. then we're good. Because <laughs> we had, we had, and, and again, we, we know when whenever we have a certain lead that's a little bit you know, back and forth. There was uh, this guy who like asked me a bunch of questions. I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, I know JC knows him. So I hit up JC. Hey, JC, you know this guy? He's like, yeah, you know, he's a little bit back and forth. Oh, okay, yeah. And I'm like, well, okay. I'll, he's like, just help him. You know, whatever happens, happens. You know, like he was one of those, we flaky. We didn't know if we were going to be able to close him or not. I gave him information. We left it at that. We both, I'm sure we both kept following up. Then like, Months later, we see him posting a, both of us see him posting a closing picture. Damn. So he ended up, he, he like, ended up no. not even being either of us. Right. It was like the fourth realtor. <laughs> yeah, it was like the fourth realtor. <laughs> right, yeah. right. So what do you guys, I feel like, you know, you guys have talked a lot about your your plans and overall what you guys have done thus far with CloudGate. What, you, what do you guys see your future? Like if you had a five-year plan right now planned out, do you guys have an idea of what it would be? We, we want to open up offices na nationally. So I have a dream that in another state, some sometimes it ties up to like Florida, that there are two agents talking in the office, and then one of them tells the other like, "Hey, why are we called CloudGate?" And then the other one responds, "Well, like, well, headquarters are in Chicago, stupid. So, <laughs> Chicago-based company, CloudGate, the Bean. Yeah, that's why." And then the other one is like, "Oh, okay, yeah, so that's yeah, yeah. CloudGate." So our dream is to go national, international, be international. Uh, yeah, oh, why where not? would you go, dude? Let's we'll start off with Mexico, Canada, Mexico, oh, <laughs> Spain. Like, how does it work? Do you guys know how the process works for that? I don't even like. We'll figure it out. That. Like, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, we've been dope. figuring out to now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still figuring out deals right now as we speak. I mean, we'll, we'll get through it as we get through it. You know. So yeah, a lot of these things are not as black and white or like easy steps as they should be. But we just we roll with the punches. Right. We figure things out, and yeah, in five years, within five years. We we're definitely going to have expand in Chicago. The reason why we chose CloudGate also is that it's not, you know, a, a very hyper local name. It's going to be global. You could have it in Florida, Seattle, New York, California, wherever. CloudGate is our goal is to make it a name brand in real estate and expand it as, as far as we can. You know, the world is ours and we're going to grab it. That's love. That's love, dude. And outside of real estate, I have another kind of question that's for you guys yourself. What is your guys' personal goals? Like, I mean, I mean, it's hard to hard enough to build a business, but what do you guys see yourself for your own self, your own personal goals? I mean, whether it's financially, owning real estate, whatever it might be, what do you guys have in mind for your own future goals? Me personally, I, I want to get more settled with expanding the office as much as possible. That's like my baby right now. But aside from that, um, I would like to own the different type of businesses. I'm for those that don't know, I'm huge on pizza. <laughs> I love pizza. I one of the dreams of mine um, is to open like a pizza restaurant. Oh shit! Another one is always to open a Puerto Rican restaurant. <laughs> um, I do. Shout out, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, like aside from that, as, we, as personal, um, aside from real estate, those would be my goals within real estate. Just expand the office as much as possible. Grow. We have. I want to make sure that within Chicago, I'm looking at all the top brokerages, and I want to see my name up there with them. So I've done the math. Um, I need 120 units to be making about a hundred thousand a month. So that's so 120 the, doors. Yep. Dang. That's that's the ultimate. That's the ultimate cycle. Yeah. But yeah, but I've kind of paused that a little bit. I'm actually looking for another place to buy right now. Mm -hmm. But all of that is paused because I want to make sure that the office grows because that is my baby. Like, right, right, <laughs> it's right. It's my newborn. It's still, right. still needs to lay on my chest. No, I get you. I get you. For for I know some people have different philosophies with real estate in terms of like purchasing it cash, financing. What do you got? What do you guys insight in that? Uh, cash is king. Yeah. Sorry, Justin. 
<laughs> no, it's not good. It's not good. I think it's dope though to be like, okay, five hundred K. Yeah, oh, if you God, have it, oh, go all in. Use <laughs> the cash. No, but um, I've 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 heard both sides of it, right? Where they're go all in on cash or leverage your money and you know, basically leverage your money to get more loans and get more properties. I have personally seen within my investors that the ones that use all cash typically stick at quality versus the ones that want to go all in and, and, and leverage their money and get different loans normally tend to lose that quality, but then they ended up doing more volume. Um, at the end of all, it all depends personally on who that person's goal is, what, what they're looking to do. Can they throw the money in there and just leave it at that? That's 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 their preference. Um, in my opinion, I think it's always best to always leverage your money, yeah. use a loan, use the tax benefits of it, uh, expanding your portfolio of investments that way. And also it builds credibility once you're trying to go back to the bank and, hey, I need a million dollars to buy five houses. The more credibility you have, the more you've done it, the easier it is going to be for the bank to trust you with that. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I leverage all of my stuff. But I'm also, you have to take into account a lot of factors, right? Not just preference. Um, your age, because the more you leverage, the, the higher risk it can become too, right? So what risk factor are you at on your age, right? So I'm at a point where I can lose it all, and then I know I'll I'll be fine because I'm young enough to start another business. And if that one fails, that's fine. I'll start another business. But the only reason why I'm okay with failing is because sometimes you fail, sometimes you learn. I'm sorry, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn, right? So I've had multiple businesses fail, and I'm okay with failing. So I've learned so much from them that this last two businesses I've established, three businesses are, are you know, definitely being successful. <clears throat> so I'm okay with that in real estate too. Because, so my first one, I bought a house for 60, 70,000 when I was 19. Um, then I pulled out the equity. Then I bought another one. Then I rehabbed it a little bit, pulled out the equity on that, got my money back. And then that same 200,000 that I have, I just keep using it and reusing it and reusing it. And then, um, <clears throat> well, it's grown from 200000 to like 300000 thanks to flips too. But then also now I have a, a little savings. I've been able to put aside a, a certain amount of savings just in case if, if, I, if my leverages become too high risk so mm-hmm. that I have a way out to some of them and not be fully broke. Right, right. <laughs> Something I want to add to that, well, s- separate note, um, but he said it um, in regards to failing, and I think that's something we didn't talk about. When you're in any business, you got to embrace the fail, right, and learn from it. A lot of people get scared. They don't take action because they're scared to fail. Uh, and once you do fail, they get bummed out about it. We we have this thing where we say, hey, we're going to fail like 95% of the time, but we're going to work for that 5% yes. You know, whatever that percentage yes is, keep working on it. The more you get them, the more you're going to get them. But you're still going to fail. And it's okay to fail as long as you're building on that, learning from it, and adjusting so that whatever it is in lending, I'm sure you failed miserably on a couple of times. We failed a bunch <laughs> on a bunch of leads, and we look back at it, okay, what could we have done better, right? We don't point the finger. We always look inside, we look in the mirror and say, hey, what, what could I have done better to have avoid this in the future? No, I agree. I think uh, it's super important, and in order for you to be successful, you have to be coachable. You have to learn how to actually take in what people are telling you and apply it to your own business because if you can't do that, then I don't think you can run a business, if I'm being completely honest. And I think with you guys, you guys have done that, and that's why you guys have been able to grow so quickly because I don't think success happens overnight. I think success happens over time and through failures. And like I love what you said, bro. You, there's no, it's not winning and losing. It's winning and learning. You know, because every single loss comes with something that you do learn. Uh, but you know, I want, I want to dive a little deeper. I know you said you got four businesses, right? What was, what was the four businesses, and how did you grow? How did you even guys even get into real estate? Like, what were you guys doing prior to to kind of get to where you guys are at right now? Um, before I was. I was in college. I was doing drug tests. Like, I would, if somebody gets into an accident, they have to get a drug test and a breathalyzer test. So I was doing that. But then, so you were not getting drug tested. <laughs> <laughs> so he knew all the loopholes. Luckily, nah. I wasn't. Cause <laughs> <laughs> if you can't beat them, join on me. So then I, I was taking out my CDL, but I had just gotten my my social security because I. You know, I didn't have um, I didn't have a social security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as I got it, I took the the test to to get my CDL. 
So as soon as I got, I passed my test to, be, to become a truck driver, the law changed. Literally passed it on June 29th, and then I couldn't go to the DMV to change my license until July 5th. But July 1st, the law changed. So and when I went to the DMV and I told them, like, hey, you know, like, I, I just passed my test, give me my CDL. They're like, well, let, let us see your green card. And I told them, well, I don't have a green card. I have, a, I have DACA, so this is what I have, a work permit. Like, you can't get it. So it was like three months of doing that before, before they were like, yeah, you know what? Fuck you. You can't get it anymore. What? <laughs> Let me, I, you know, there's certain points in your life where, you know, there are a turning point. Yeah. And for me, I don't, I don't know why I vividly remember when that, like when that happened to him because he called me and I like, I vividly remember where I was, what happened. And I was like, fuck man. And he's going through it too. Cause yeah. He had worked so hard to, you know, one, being undocumented, having a path to do, uh, being, a, you know, having a social and then working his ass off to try to make something of himself, to get get his CDL, to go through the whole process and then just be at the finish line and being told, no, you can't finish, you know. And I remember him calling me and and just, you know, honestly, it was like a boy's talk, like, man, bro, like, pick your chin up, you know, You're, yeah. this is just... A minor setback for a bigger comeback, and that's that's a memory that always sticks with me because, like, as we were walking in here, I was like, "Look at us now, bro. This is this is this that's is." Dope. Remember when you that. were calling me, like, and now you are here, bro. Like, he was so bummed. I can't even describe. Like, I, my heart was aching with him because it's 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 it was uh, an injustice. It was uh, someone that was trying to do something for himself, and you're telling him no, you know. So, and then that's what we feel for our people too. You know, we want to make sure we're helping. People that want to, you know, do better for themselves, whether that's through real estate or whatever else it is, we want to support as many of our people that we connect as possible. Um, now, to to go back to where I started, <laughs> man. Um, so, for those that don't know, uh, I'm Puerto Rican. I was born in Puerto Rico. Um, I came to Chicago when I was 13 years of age. I didn't speak. I didn't speak no English. I thought you <laughs> couldn't even tell right now. I still now. don't. <laughs> I spoke no English. Um, and you know, it's funny. I always tell my my team. I'm like, man, when I came here in Puerto Rico, I went, I went to to elementary here, and it was this big building with lockers. And to me, it was amazing. That was like, I was, I felt like Harry Potter. Like I went to Wizarding <laughs> yeah. World. Like I was like so. I was so amazed with how, like, this whole school system, big buildings, you Did know, they give there. food? Did they give you food in Puerto Rico? We, we got, actually, hey, we got really good food in Puerto hey, Rico. Our lunch is over there. That's even right. <laughs> we got, like, Chinese food. What? Yeah. We, we, <laughs> hey, I don't know how. Yeah. I think that's where the whole budget went to. Because, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, I can't cook. I would, per 100%, I would go right now. If someone told me to eat a school lunch, and then they said Puerto Rico or here, I would 100% pick Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah. So, once I came here and, you know, you know, looking back, I was like, man, I, it was amazing for me to be in that school. And then I'm telling my team, my team's like, where you were in the hood. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, <laughs> like, to me, it wasn't the hood, bro. Right, like, right. that was a magical experience. I was in the right. wizarding world, you know? <laughs> um, and then, you know, one of the biggest challenges when I came here, I faced was like learning English. You know, I was very, I was a grade A student throughout like my whole life coming here and going in ESO classes and not understanding everything. It was a whole different language, whole different world to me. And I challenged myself to learn English as much as possible. I came here in seventh grade. By eighth grade, I was taken out of ESO classes and moved into regular classes because I had to learn English at that point. Uh, and I made that a mental challenge for myself. I was like, hey, I got have to I have to make it, right? Like, I have to help my family. And then, I don't know, for me, it was just like a mental challenge since I was little. I would kind of say it to some degree, I had like a, what you say? Like, we have a um, chip on your shoulder um, to, to you know, help my family. Because growing up, it was just always me and my mom and my sisters. I had nobody else there. It, it, I made it a point to make sure that I helped my family as much as I could. So, fast forward, uh, met this guy in high school. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not going to talk about our high school adventures, so I'm going to skip forward. They were, they were amazing. Um, we, we went through different paths, but always kept in touch with each other. And like he mentioned, unbeknownst to each other, we both literally got our licenses around the same time. And uh, he was like, hey, join my team. And I was like, no, join my team, you know, because we, we didn't know, so we went separate ways. 
I ended up joining his team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as I joined his team, it was just me and him grinding it out, working together to make sure that, you know, we, we accomplish our goals. I was seeing how hard he was working and that was motivating me to work even harder. And I know vice versa, you know. Um, once I got through that and we started rolling and getting closings done, then we, then we started figuring out the structure and things of, and things of that nature. So um, it's been a wild ride, but. You know, things happen for a reason, man. And that's part of the things I always tell my clients, too, when we're seeing a house. If it didn't work out, it didn't work out for a reason. We keep it moving. Right. And I love that story because you guys kind of, like I said, relationship-wise, it's crazy to see how much growth you guys had over the last couple of years. And, um, you know, just kind of drawing your way into real estate. Like, it was a whole journey. But did, were you doing something before real estate or? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Um, yes, I was. So before real estate, I was actually working at a bank. I was a quality assurance uh, manager. At, I'm not gonna name the bank, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was stuck in the corporate field, uh, working nine to five, working more than nine to five. Uh, I worked my way up in that company. Within four years, I became the highest highest paid employee in that office. Um, over people that have been there 10, 12 years. Still an employee though. And still an employee. So. I grinded, I worked overtime, and it came to a position where I kept pushing for the company to grow, and a new position became available, but I had just switched over from a new position and a different department, and a management position became available, and I was denied the right to interview for that position because I hadn't had six months at my current position, but I was well overqualified. I was setting myself up those four years from the get-go. Again, I have always looked for the top. I had set myself up to become, you know, the management, keep keep rising the ranks, right? Once I was denied that, that just left a very sour taste in my mouth. Uh, I, I look, I reflected back and I was like, man, I, I spent four or five years here working my ass off and I am denied just because I just hit a new, you know, I just... Oh, was that the same time? Corporate policies, you know? Was that the same time that you guys, uh, like the CDL? And all around this? the same time. <laughs> well, you know what's crazy? And now that you said that around the same time, what age did you come here from? Uh, 12. From Mexico? He was 12. Did you speak English? No. No? How long did it take you to speak English? Six months. Six than... months, a year. So, again, it's like, it's funny. We come from completely different worlds, but it's like similar, the different different countries, but similar backgrounds. I you got know? taken out as ESL at eighth grade too. Yeah, so I remember taking history, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, and then everybody kind of knew a little bit. I was yeah. like, "I don't know anything of this." <laughs> so I I always think back about that too. Like we we're very similar but different. You know, it's it's just kind of funny how things work out, uh, and we both kind of went through the same struggles as as you know as we went through our our life and careers. Um, once that happened with the bank, I was like, nah, I'm out. I'm going into the real estate field. And I just took the dive. And what I love about that is I think everyone that's in your guys' position, you guys start with a certain level of hunger. And I think in order for you to be successful, you have to have that that hunger and drive in order for you to become successful. And one thing you told me, you were like, there was a point in time JC was telling me how you generate leads was actually you would just go to a grocery store and you would just sit out of a grocery store and generate leads. And I tell people the same exact thing that you're telling people. It's like, dude, if I was short leads and I couldn't generate business, I would figure it out, dude. I would go fucking Target. I go wherever I got to go to get find business, I would go figure out and do it. So how do you guys feel like, Growing up, did you guys feel like your background, your overall, where you came from, has stemmed where you've brought your drive and hunger from? Or what do you think makes you motivated to be successful? You know, you learn by example. And I, that my parents, they're, they were the ones that they came over here. My parents didn't have any family here. They were all in Mexico. So uh, growing up, I saw them doing nothing but working, 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 and taking care of us. So uh, I don't think... I think that was just embedded to me. Like, that's how that's how I saw life. Like, oh, well, you have to work. You have to figure it out. So, I mean, I don't know. I think there, all of that just came from my parents, like the way that my parents are. And my parents are both like, highly educated. You know, they have college degrees. But they came here, and then they started from nothing. Right. Going to construction, doing my mom's same stress. You know, and then, but, but then my dad figured it out. He started doing real estate. And, you know, he started flipping houses. He started buying houses. So <clears throat> it kind of did put that seed in my mind. So then I just combined both, right? The hard work with real estate. For me, it was 
a, a little bit of the same, but different. Um, seeing my mom, you know, I had no father growing up. It was just my mom taking care of me and my sisters and me helping, basically telling my sisters to clean up around, you know, being the big older brother. Um, my biggest motivation, and I feel like I put that ship on my shoulder to make sure that I help my family succeed as much as possible. So I didn't want to see my mom, you know, working a minimum wage job. I wanted to see her just living her life. By, uh, my, I always tell her, I still tell her, I'm still going to buy you that mansion. Yeah. Um, tell her the same thing. Yeah, so I'm still going to buy her that mansion. So it's just one of those things. That was my biggest drive is just make sure that I help my family as much as I can. Uh, even if I, one of the things, like recently, one of my cousins told me, like, oh, I'm very proud of you. You made it. I'm like, I'm not nowhere near where I want to be, but I appreciate that because I have very high goals for myself. And I know one of those is going to be once I get my mom that little mansion, you know. <laughs> so I, I, I'm now I'm minimizing the mansion. No, no, little, 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 little mansion. Like <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think that when you have those, like I, I don't even feel close to where I, my true potential is, you know. And what about I, you? What, what are, what's your, I guess, what's your goal and what's your drive? I, I mean, my, my goal and drive is is similar to both you guys. Is is from my foundation and my parents. You know, for a long time, I saw my parents like. They never stopped. Like, it was 10 o'clock at night. They put me to bed. But, like, you know, I'll sneak downstairs, and I would just watch them. They're still working. Like, yo, I and I drove me till this day. Like, I can still picture that in my head. They were together in the office, like, working every single day. And for me, that was like, okay, my mission and job is to not only – build upon what they've built, but make make more trees. I take an analogy of trees. I make it that way. My grandparents, they came here from nothing. They came from Mexico. My other grandparents came from Puerto Rico. So I'm both, I'm Mexican, Puerto Rican. And they came here from nothing. They worked at factories. They did all the things and they, you know, built the foundation. My parents, they planted that tree seed that they did and they watered it and they grew a big tree. And my job is to plant 10 more trees. And for my kids to hopefully plant another 20 trees. Like, you know, like th that's the analogy I like to use. And that was always my drive. When I first started working, I loved that there was no cap. Commission, I just straight commission, I love that because there's no ceiling. I can make whatever I want, and it's up to me to produce and put food on my table, and I love that. Every single day, I was like, okay. Now, my next goal and drive was like, okay, for my future family. It came faster than what I expected, but now my future <laughs> family's here, and now you're like, okay, now it's time to button up. Now you're either going to sink or swim, right? And I'm, I'm a type of guy where I'm not going to sink. I'm going to I'm gonna figure it out how to swim. So for me, my biggest goals was to provide for my future family, to not only for myself, but for my parents. Like I, my biggest dream was to like have my parents and have all my family and just call them without even blinking. Like, yo, hey, we're going to go to, you know, Cabo's. I, I pay for everything. Just be ready. Next month, we're going to go. Just they, they pack up. You're good. Like, I want to be able to do that without even blinking. And that's just dope to be able to do something by my mama, man. By my Whatever the situation might be, to be able to build yourself to that point and that level where you can provide for your family and you don't have to blink to do so, that's amazing, you know? And one thing that I also is like my number one goal, and I don't think I'm ever going to stop working because I love working, but I do want to have the ability to not have to work. Like being able to shut off and like, nat like actually, I don't have to, you know, I'm still going to work because I don't see myself without work. You know, it's just, that's what drives me. That's what I desire. I love to do it. It's fun. But I want to have the ability to just go to Mexico and like whatever happens, happens, you know, like, I mean, I don't need the business, but if I want to, I could turn it on when I want. You can, you're know, my presence is back because I chose to be back, you know, and that's the biggest thing for me. I don't know if you guys kind of share the same vision, but that's like huge for me. Well, I don't. I think you said it, um, but didn't say it. It's not that you don't need the business. It's that the business doesn't need you. Right. You know, and that's that's reaching that I call it the seventh level, so that your business is self sufficient, that your team is running smoothly, things are still moving, and you don't need to be micromanaging or managing anything within the business for mm -hmm. it to keep flowing. You know, being a well old machine that keeps making money. Yeah, that's always a dream, right? Making money. While that's dope, dude. There you go. There you go. So if we got to wrap everything up, I want to kind of see on on your guys' opinion, right? You are like future you guys, right? You guys, Cloud Gates in Miami, Cloud Gates everywhere, wherever. What do you guys say like the pathway to get to where you guys are and at that finish line? What is your number one dream and goal that you guys want to accomplish? So like, you know, I think that everyone should have that pathway. Right, you should kind of figure out, and I know you guys talked about a little about open brokerages everywhere, my Mexico, Miami, whatever. But that end result, what do you think the path? What do you think you guys see yourself doing in order to achieve that? And what does that end goal for you guys look like? The path is going to be hiring, 
hiring as much staff as we can um, while also setting up systems. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, and just to kind of break it down a little bit, mm -hmm. as far as like our us growing the brokerage would be like hiring someone for, you know, strictly for onboarding, strictly for payroll, uh, cleaning the office is, is a big task yeah. that we we hands on take right now as a team effort. Um, but things like that, um, streamlining the onboarding and the training process <laughs> to help our agents elevate their business. And by what I mean by that is not it's not just us, but it's going to be a team effort of people that are going to be there to ensure our agents are doing X, Y, and Z, right? Um, and automating our business too, but um, using technology to help, hey, check in on agents or make sure that, hey, maybe this is something you should try on your business. Um, that's another goal is that as we expand also, as, as we develop more staff, we're also expanding and maybe using more resources to have more technology like a CRM for our agents to have or even that uh, right now, for example, we already have graphic design. I want to explode on that and make sure that we have maybe multiple staff for, for graphic design. I want to have what we have here. I want to have a podcast setting, right? Yeah. Media room. That's big for social media. So m our path to growth is going to be focusing on what we have now and elevating our staff so that way we can have more value to provide our agents within their business. Now, you had mentioned, so that's and that's path. what's going to help us re reach us to that end goal, you know, just you elevating. Know, <clears throat> to summarize what he said in very simple words, um, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? It's already been invented. We, we, can, we have multiple systems we can copy. And we can copy the, the armed forces, right? Like delegation of leadership, you know, creating different departments. And that's it, you know, just copying other bigger brokerages to see what they've done, to see what we can assimilate to ours. And then with our twist, you know, that's it. Yeah, just like in your new agent. I and mean, like I said in the beginning, hey, study top producers, figure out what works for you. We're doing the same thing. It's yeah. just rinse and repeat. What are the big tops doing? What's working? What's not working for us? Let's rinse and repeat and see what sticks. That's just dope, dude. I mean, I 100% agree. And I had a similar experience as you guys. Is when I was in the business, I met a top producer, and I was like, what the fuck? This guy's a top producer? Like, <laughs> it's nothing special. Like, it's like, he, he ain't doing nothing. I was like, whoa, like, he's crazy. But yeah. And that's that's something that you kind of need to have in order for you to to actually have that moment of realization that you're able to do that yourself. Um, but I want to thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate your guys' time, and you guys are an inspiration to everybody in the industry. So thank you guys for coming out and sharing your guys' story. As always, if you guys have not already, like, subscribe on this video. And if you want to see more content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But I appreciate you guys' time. Hope you guys have your cafecito.